I'm very excited to be able to sit here with Allison Block, the designer from Travers today, and talk about from document to decor. Uh, when Allison asked me to host this conversation, I was so thrilled. And as we got into it and I learned about things that I didn't know about Travers, it became really quite wonderful. Knowing that you got your degree in uh, surface and pattern design, was your goal in college to be a luxury textile designer? And what was your trajectory to become uh, Travers Design Director? My passion is, is interiors and homes. And I like the idea of designing something that someone is deliberately choosing to live with. Like I love clothes, but they live in a closet. I love the idea of working on color and design and fabric that you are putting in your home. It's so personal. And that was what was really appealing to me. And so as soon as I could, I made the jump from fashion back to interiors and worked at Schumacher for about four years before um, somebody had contacted me from Zimmer and Road. And I wasn't looking for a job, but it was the perfect time in my career to take all of these skills that I had learned and I felt confident and ready. So it's, it's really great to continue learning and using the tools that I came with. Will you take us on the road for that process? And maybe this is a great time, I don't know, to start screen sharing some fabrics and sort of walk us through the process. Yes, I, I can and I will. Let me do a little screen share. These are the three archival designs that we are going to talk about. And so Tropica is in the middle. And then on the right, we have Flora Print. And on the left is the original document for what has become the Jacobean vine. Um, now, were all of these three patterns in Travers in the 90s? Or were some of these just reference materials that they had in their library? Um, I believe that only Tropica was in Travers in the 90s. And I think that Flora Print was a design document that was a part of the archive that Eldo Neto brought over. And mm. so same for the Jacobean Vine. Um, when I've gone through all of our old designs, these two never, they never popped up or, you know, they did never looked familiar. Um, but what's very cool about the Jacobean vine is that I am almost positive that it was a bed coverlet from the mid 1800s. It's so no heavy, it's chunky. It's the, like the perfect dimensions of sort of like a full size bed. Um, and so oftentimes the designs, and we'll get to a slide later where you'll really see how weathered and tattered um, the document is, that it had this whole life before we've given it a second life. When I'm designing a fabric collection, usually the initial um, spark or hero print comes from our archive. And it's, you know, I, our archive, truth be told, sounds more glamorous than it is. It's, um, it's a storage unit in Connecticut. And so when I go there, I go there and I spend the whole day. Um, I, I just sort of go not looking for anything in particular and then um, sort of just responding the way I do to different designs. And so when I was there, when I was beginning to develop Tropica, I came across this uh, print on the left, which is an old memo. And Tropica was introduced for the first time in 1997. And so sometimes the archival designs were um, designs that had been introduced and were once a part of the portfolio. And other times with the other two that I'm going to show you, they're just documents that have been accumulated or purchased and collected along the way and maybe never came to fruition before, but you know have a place to, to fit in now. And so when I found this Tropica print, I, you know, I, I really reacted to it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, the colors were wrong. The cloth was wrong. I didn't have the whole repeat, but I knew that there was something about this design that could be resurrected and brought back in, in a fresh way for today. So now you've got these documents and you say, okay, here I've got something, it's West Indies. Now I've got to color it and find grounds. How does that happen? So what happens for each one, there was a different process. For Tropica, I was able to um, locate and find the original manufacturer. And it's a supplier wow. in Italy, in Lake Como, that, that Zimmer and Road works with and that I've worked with throughout my whole career. And so I, I was kind of desperate to find it because I scoured um, 
eBay and the internet and all sorts of different for sale textile sites looking for a large enough piece of it because the piece from the archive was not the full repeat. It was a very small portion of the repeat. And so I was really trying to find the whole repeat. Um, and it turned out that after I couldn't find it on the internet, I put a few feelers out to some of our suppliers and got very, very lucky that this supplier in Italy not only still had large pieces from the initial introduction, but also was able to digitize it for me and do the color separations for me. Um, because I do all of my color work on the computer, but to get the color separations in such a way, and you'll see here the two on the top have the color gam at the bottom. And so there's 13 colors that are in each Tropica print. Um, and the two on the bottom were images from the mill. Um, and you'll see that they have the gam on the side or what we call a salvage legend. Um, and so they were able to not only provide me with the whole repeat, but also um, digitize it. And it, it wasn't, it, originally it was screen printed. So it really was this sort of labor of collaboration. How much trial and error does each color scheme take? A lot. <laughs> A lot. Usually I have an idea in my head. I mean, always I have an idea in my head of what I hope to achieve from each colorway. Um, but I'd say to end up with these four colors of Tropica, we, I um, experimented with about 20 or 25 different colorways. Um, and then once that gets narrowed down, we trialed seven. And so of the seven, we ordered four. So and these are the four. And these are, these are the four. Um, and then even, you know, once you get to the point where you really love the concept for the colorway and you think it's really working, then you have to go in and you have to start tweaking like the actual nuance of each screen. And so maybe it needs to be a little bit duller or a little brighter or lighter or, you know, whatever it is, because the, the colors need to speak to each other and they sort of have their own language because you don't want to look at the design and have your eyes zero in on, you know, one area that's too bright or that doesn't work. Mm -mm. It has to be very cohesive and to make, to make it perfect, it takes a lot of trial and error. Um, they're yeah. really, they're really exquisite, Allison. I'm like, I'm, I'm mesmerized by every different color. Like the blue is just, it's, it's electric. Thank you. Tropical was my opportunity to really experiment with color. And, you know, it wouldn't be in not every design that we do for Travers are we going to have this, this top right combination of the coral and the aqua and really have it be truly tropical. Um, and so Tropica, what well, I call it the hero print of the collection, it's the design in which all of the rest of the colors in the rest of the design sort of layer into. And so this sort of sets the tone for the different color stories. I got to say, Austin, awesome. this, this, is, this is one of my favorite shots. I'm so captivated by the way you've got the Jacobean vine running down the entire sofa. It's truly, it's truly magnificent. And it does such justice to the scale of the embroidery. Thank you. And, and my, my mother can attest, I know she's listening, that I, a lot of this collection was designed in Cleveland and I had the original um, trials from the mill draped over every piece of furniture in the house because I really wanted this design to work with the scale to be able to be upholstered on a sofa or running down a chair, you know, the whole way. And then also being able to cut it up and make pillows that are, you know, very deliberately engineered. And so I knew that for the photo shoot, it wasn't going to do the design justice to make curtains. It, they will make, this design will make gorgeous curtains, but I felt like we really needed to show it applied on, um, an actual piece of furniture for it to be a little bit more aspirational. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, so this is the Jacobean vine and this is where it started. You know, you know those where it started and where it is now? Um, this is where it started. And so what, what were some of your challenges or, or what surprised and delighted you in fact about using this, uh, this document moving into the, the current iteration? So there, there were a number of challenges and it was one of those things where when you look at it, the scale doesn't come across very well in this image. It is, it is very, very large 
And in looking at it, you can see that it's very quirky in the fact that the repeat is not, there isn't a real repeat, just mm, based you're on right. the medallions that are right next to each other and the two leaves that are right next to each other above that. And just that even they're not the same. And so it, this is just this perfect example of a quirky historical textile document. <laughs> and, and it's old and it's tattered and so what I really wanted to do, and it really, it had an evolution because when I saw this, I thought, oh, wow, I love this climbing vine. Um, and this is like a very classic 17th century tree of life design. And what I wanted to do is extract elements of this to become a vine, you know, to become a striped vine that could go up the roll. And, and in my mind, I, I sort of always knew that I wanted to do two across and there's a supplier that we work with in India that I had an example of a recent embroidery that they used, or, you know, that they had produced, and it had all of these magnificent stitch effects. And, you know, each color on the original, do or on, you know, the document from the mill, each color had a different technique and, you know, a different way of using the thread. And so when I was designing it, I realized, oh, this, this could actually be more dimensional by making it more multicolored. And so it went from extracting the elements to make the climbing vine and then adding color to it. Um, so it really, it, it had multiple steps along the way to get to the final product. Well, and I also love this, this, this juxtaposition of the Hero Print Tropica, which really the only thing you changed were ground and color. Mm -hmm. You took it sort of as it was designed and then you've got this, this 19th century embroidery and you're like, this is a jumping off point, but now I'm totally changing it. Exactly. And I think it's, it shows the, the dynamism of your practice. Thank you. I'm so excited all the time by fabric and by the process. And my background really is in multicolored print designs. And with the Jacobean vine in particular, we, I don't think that it would be hugely popular if we had translated it exactly the same. Like it really did feel a little bit old world in um, just in, in, in the way that it would have been if we had introduced it now, it, it wouldn't have gone further. Like it, I wanted to find a way to modernize it and to make it like for today, but using these elements and these motifs that, that have this really strong, rich history. Flora Print was the third and final design that came from our archive. And this was one um, a little bit different from when I saw Tropica. I loved Tropica and knew that we could build a collection around it, but Tropica is a design that may not be for everyone because it is a little bit more tropical um, and a little bit more um, specific, but flora print to me, this screams Travers. This has all of the elements that mm -hmm. make a really, really successful Travers design. It's multicolored. It's a little bit quirky. It has lots of these fall-ons that are created. Um, it's floral and the scale is great because it's not a large scale, but it's not too dense or too small. And in fact, because these older documents were originally printed on different cloth sizes, like right now there's pretty, there's a standard width that we use, which is about 54 inches wide. But a lot of these archival designs were printed on either cloths that were, you know, not as wide, you know, they were more narrow or even wider. And so the repeats don't work. And this one, we went back and forth uh, over the scale because I really didn't want to sacrifice the scale at all. I didn't want to enlarge it and I didn't want to shrink it, but it needed to work within the width of the cloth. And so this does intentionally have a little bit of a larger overmatch, which was because we really didn't want to sacrifice the size. With Flora Print, there's 10 colors that are in this original and it's screen printed, but we've translated that into 26 colors that wow. are digitally printed. <laughs> yes. And wh why 26? There's 26 because I didn't want to lose any of the fall-ons that were created naturally. When you print either wet color on top of wet color or um, wet color on top of dry color, a third color is created. 
And we really, really didn't want to sacrifice that. And so I needed to find a way to translate this exactly as is, except we weren't going to screen print it. We were going to digitally print it. And so from these original 10 colors, all of the you know third and fourth and fifth colors that are made, we, um, we took verbatim. Uh, for floor print, did you use the same ground for each uh, colorway? Yes, the same ground for each colorway. And this is on um, a union, I believe. And What's so, union? A union means a uh, cotton linen blend. Oh, thank you. I get a new word. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so, yeah, we use the same. We try to do that um, with, for continuity or consistency that any given design is printed on all the colorways are on the same cloth but in this collection each print is on a different cloth so all the colors for flora print or for tropica or for sanibel they're all printed on the same cloth but each design is on a different cloth and so now personal favorite woven print embroidery what yes. what says allison block <laughs> my, my personal favorite is always going to be a print and it's usually going to be very, very multicolored. Um, yeah, I just, that's, I think that's what made me fall in love with this career is print design and especially multicolored because it's my favorite part of the whole job is sitting there and, and coming up with the color combinations. I have to, it's usually Bob Dylan, but I have to put headphones on. I can't be distracted. Oh, wow. I have to turn my email off. Um, and just really, really spend the whole day, multiple days on color work. When you're working on a collection, so you've worked on Tropica, it's coming to everyone, all the showrooms that are watching, it's coming to you right now if you don't have it. How do you know a collection is complete? It's a good question because you don't, you don't ever really know, but you feel it. And, and you can tell that if you're able to really you know, layer the multiple color combinations together to keep creating, you know, other sub um, schemes, and, and you can use it in a, in a multitude of ways, then you know that you're, you've created this very well rounded collection, you know, and, and you sort of know that you're done in different stages, like I, you know, that you're done with figuring out what the designs and the articles are going to be when you can look at it and you can say, oh, you can do the whole room. You can do the whole house. You have the sheer, you have the upholstery, you have the print, you have the window. You know, you want to be able to, to try and create a one-stop destination for the designer. Out of all the collections you've designed so far, do you yet have a favorite? You know, I think, I think the favorite is always the one that you're working on. Um, for me right now, Tropica is my favorite collection, I think, that I've ever worked on in my career. Um, and, and I think that 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 comes from a lot of different reasons, but I think it's the one I'm most proud of. I think this collection to me is really well balanced. It's really well colored, but also it was created during this crazy time for all of us. And I think of Tropica, you know, some of the people who've, who've heard the sales meetings or who, you know, who've heard me talk about this collection have heard this before, but to me, it's this breath of fresh air. It's this lightness after this very dark time. And I think that people need that right now. I think that everybody has been spending all this time at home and indoors. And so I really wanted to design a collection that was going to bring the outside in and in a way that, you know, we're not going to be upset about spending more time indoors. <laughs> and and so that, I, I think Tropica is, is the one that is, um, it means the most. I think we've, we've our hour is gone and I, just, I could just keep chatting with you all afternoon. It's so much fun. <laughs> so easy. Um, it, is it any parting words for our audience? Oh, goodness. Um, just that I hope that the collection resonates. I hope that you see the designs and the colors and that you too feel like you can come up for air again and that you can find a place in your home to use it. Thank you so much for asking me to join. I had such a great time. Everyone, wherever you are in the world, thank you, Frederica. Lovely seeing you. Bye, 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 Allison. Bye, See you soon. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.